Once upon a time, in the village of Ekemiri, there lived a girl named Ugochi who lived with her stepmother and was badly abused. Her mother died of stroke. Not long enough, her father married a second wife, not knowing she was evil and a wicked woman, but always pretending to be nice to Ugochi and her father. After the death of Ugochi's mother, Juliana started seducing Ikena, Ugochi's father, and then forced herself on him in order to impregnate her and also marry her. Ikena at first refused, but seeing how often she comes to his house to do some house chores and also cook and wash his clothes for him ever since his wife died, gave him the courage to fall in love again on seeing how Juliana loved and care for him and his daughter, Ugochi. Ugochi always loved her and they also appreciate her for caring and having so much love and compassion for them. Not knowing that she has evil motive, Ikena has the largest farm in the whole village of which he planted different crops. Juliana had always wanted to be Ikena's wife but ever since he married Ugochi's mother, Juliana's heart was filled with rage and bitterness. She was jealous whenever she sees Ikena and his wife in the market square and people singing praises to them as one of the wealthiest farmers in the community. Juliana, with enviness, wishes she was in the position of Ikena's wife and wishes to parade and showcase herself everywhere in the village that the richest woman in the community, being Ikena's wife, has arrived. Juliana then thought of how she would kill Ikena's wife. She then went to his house, planted a poison for his wife. Few days later, she died after stepping on it. Ikena, seeing how good she was to him and how she seduced him, made him love Juliana and also fell on her trap. She then became pregnant after sleeping with him because that was the only way for her to marry Ikena. And fulfilling her mission and with the pregnancy made him to marry her nine months later she gave birth to a girl as years passed by she started changing from all her pretense she then thought of how to kill Ikena and take over the big farm from him in order to work with pride and also gain more respect from the villagers as the owner of the farm one fateful day as she served her husband his meal she then added some poison inside the food and then gave to her husband. Immediately, Ikena finished eating the food. He started coughing out blood until he passed out. Things became more tough for Ugochi as her stepmother made life unbearable for her. She became so cruel, difficult and wicked towards Ugochi. She would send Ugochi to fetch water, wash the plate clean the house, wash the clothes, and even cook for her and her daughter. Juliana would pet and spoil her daughter not to do anything in the house. One day, Ugochi was cleaning the house as usual. Her stepmother went to the farm to get some crops as she wasn't around, leaving her stepdaughter behind in the house. Ugochi did all the house chores and was very tired. She then forgot to fetch some water from the stream as she slept off. Nyoma, being her stepsister, couldn't do anything in the house. She was busy lazing about. When her stepmother returns from the farm, she saw that there was no water in the drum. Out of anger, she went straight to Ugochi's room, found out that she was sleeping tirelessly, and then gave her the beating of her life, pushed her outside, and told her to go to the stream and fetch the water. Ugochi pleaded with her that she was tired and didn't know when she slept off and besides it's getting late and nobody will be in the stream because the day is getting dark but instead juliana pushed her threw the bucket on her to go and fetch the water with tears in her eyes she left for the stream at the middle of the road she met an old woman who was carrying a heavy firewood instead she insisted on helping her with it she then carried the bunch of firewood to her house. The old woman thanked her and told her she is such a loving and helping child. She then blessed her and gave her some gold as a reward for helping her. 
She refused at first. Then the old woman pleaded for her to collect it, that is, from her heart. Ugochi then collected the gold from her, put it inside her pocket, and thanked her. She then hurriedly walked down to the stream. On getting there, she saw a mermaid. At first, she was astonished and was nervous. She saw how beautiful they were, but was terrified to go close to the river. Although she has been hearing of mermaid stories, but never knew they existed. She then greeted the mermaids as they were staring at her. Her hands were shaking as she bent down to fetch the water. One of the mermaids then called her and asked why she came fetching water at night. She then told her how tired she was from doing the house choice, fell asleep, and how her stepmother beat and compelled her to go to the stream. The mermaids were very sorry for her and then asked her to dance while they sing for her. She did as they said and also noticed the mermaids wasn't evil but friendly. As she was about leaving, one of the mermaids then called her back, gave her three stones of diamonds as appreciation for dancing. She collected it, thanked them and left. On getting to the house, her stepmother was already sitting down outside, waiting for her to return. As she was about dropping the bucket of water, the mother went inside the house, packed all her belongings, and threw them outside. Ugochi tried to explain why she was late, but her stepmother never wanted to pay attention to her. But instead, she was angry with her and then forced her to leave the house. She cried, pleaded to her stepmother, but to no avail, as she packed her bags. There was no place for her to stay that night. She then slept under a mango tree close to the market square. The next morning, she sold the gold and diamond to a foreigner who came to their village market and made lot of money. She was very happy and then bought a new house and cars. She became the richest in the village and the talk of the town. As months passed by, Juliana and her daughter started struggling. Nobody in the village paid attention nor respected them. She lavished all her late husband's money, properties, by buying expensive items. She also sold the farm and nothing was left behind. She heard all the rumors going on in the village about Ugochi, the richest girl, but she never believed it. One day, as she was going to the market, she spotted Ugochi inside an expensive car. She couldn't believe her eyes. As she went close to her, she then pleaded with Ugochi to forgive her and then asked her how she acquired all her wealth. Ugochi then forgave her and told her the story. She then gave her some money as she was leaving. Out of jealousy and bitterness, Juliana went home, told her daughter all that happened. In the evening, as it was getting dark, Juliana then called her daughter, told her to go to the stream, the same way Ugochi did. She then left for the stream. On getting to the stream, she saw an old woman with a heavy bunch of firewood on her head. The old woman then pleaded for her to help her, but instead, Inyoma refused, laid abuses, and told the old woman she was not her slave. The old woman shook her head in disappointment and was about leaving when her pair of gold dropped on the ground. Instantly, Inoma saw it, picked it, and ran away with it. The old woman pleaded for her to bring it, but she never listened. She then laid a curse on the gold and she left with her firewood. On getting to the stream, Inoma saw the mermaids and was surprised. She never greeted the mermaids. Immediately, she saw a diamond inside the water. She threw her bucket away and was about taking the diamonds when the mermaids told her to dance before she can take it. But instead, she insulted the mermaids and told them she is not their slave to dance to their songs. The mermaids then asked her why she came fetching water at night. She then laughed at them insulted them and told them she came because of the diamond and gold. As she dipped her hands to carry the diamonds at the edge of the water, the mermaids then ordered her to stop. But instead, 
She took it, left her bucket behind and ran away with the diamond. But instead, she took it, left her bucket behind and ran away with the diamond. Instantly, the mermaids then cast a bad spell and the diamond. Immediately she got home. The mother was happy to see her daughter returning with a smile on her face. The mother then took her daughter inside the house, locked the door so no one can see the treasures. Immediately, Unyama brought the gold and the diamond out from her pocket. They all turned into a grain of sands. Few minutes later, a big masquerade appeared and whipped them to death. And the moral of this story is, never be jealous or envious of other people. Please subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell below for more videos. Once upon a time, in the village of Abelikban, there lived a couple who lived together but had no child of their own since they got married. For seven years, Arinzi and Chidima have waited and was hoping that their own children will come one day. Each day Chidima goes out to the streets and seeing other people's children, she sorrowfully cried in her heart and wished she had her own child. Each day her mother-in-law comes visiting. She would mock and insult Chidima. She would call her a barren woman and a witch who had swallowed all her children. Chidima would cry all day and told her she is not God that gives children and that she will wait on God. Instantly, her mother-in-law would yell at her to give her grandchildren and that she's not getting any younger. One day, she called her son Arinze to get a second wife who would give her grandchildren. But Arinze told his mother that he loves his wife and don't want to hurt her by marrying a second wife. Instantly, Arinze's mother shouted at him and told him he is marrying a fellow man like him, that his wife is a man who couldn't bear children for him. Days passed by as Arinze thought deeply on what his mother said to him and then made up his mind to marry a second wife. He then discussed it with his wife Chidima that he really needs children. He is tired of the prayers and fastings every day hoping children will come but no result. Chidima wept bitterly as he has already made up his mind. Two months later, Arinze married a second wife, Adobe. They both lived in peace with Chidima except the fact that they don't have children. It's been two years when Arinze got married to Adobe, but still no issues. Arinze was tired and has given hope of not having children. Their mother-in-law then told them to visit a river in the village and that she heard the river solves many problems. On hearing this, Arinze was eager for his wives to go because he was so desperate for children. Adobe agreed to follow her mother-in-law to the river, but Chidima never agreed to follow them. She then told them to wait on God, that she would never soil her hands on evil. But instead, they laughed at her. Her husband then told her, for how long are we going to wait? That he can't wait anymore. She should continue waiting till your eternity. Her mother-in-law then started rendering insult on her, that she don't want any good in the family and that she is bad and a wicked wife. Immediately, Arinze and his wife, Adobe, with his mother, then left for the river. On getting there, the river goddess then told Adobe to wash herself three days inside the river every midnight. The first, second, and third night, she went to wash herself in the river. As she dipped herself inside the river when making the incantation, mermaids then surrounds her with a male mermaid making love with her inside the water without her knowing because she wasn't seeing them and was unconscious. One month later, she started noticing some signs of pregnancy as she was already pregnant. Arizi was very happy to the extent that they made mockery of Chidima. 
Arize will pay more attention to Adobe more than Chidima because she is carrying his child. Months passed as the stomach continued to grow bigger. Arize's mother then suggested to her son to chase away Chidima that there is no need for her to be in that house since she can't bear children and she shouldn't suffocate her daughter-in-law and grandchild with her barrenness. Arizi then thought about it. He then told Chidima to pack all her belongings to her mother's side since she can't do what Adobe did. Chidima wept bitterly as she packed her bags and hoping on God to intervene, not knowing she was two weeks pregnant as she left to her mother's house. Nine months later, Adobe put to bed and gave birth to a mermaid. Immediately after giving birth, she died in shock after seeing the child. Arizi and his mother was terrified and was astonished to see the mermaid. He cried with a loud voice as he mourned his dead wife. Arizi then started blaming his mother for all the things she has caused by destroying his home, chased his wife and also took Adobe to the river as he laments. The villagers now heard of the mermaid child and threw it in the river where it belongs. Ten months later, Arizi went to Chidima's house as he heard she was pregnant and has given birth to twins. He then knelt down with his mother and apologized to Chidima. Chidima and her parents, out of love, forgave them. She then returned to her husband's house. Arizi was so happy to carry his child as the baby was just like him. Arizi's mother never treated Chidima bad and loved her unconditionally with her grandchildren. They all worshipped the God she was serving and even advised other couples looking for children to wait on God. And the moral of this story is to wait on God and don't be too desperate. Once upon a time, there lived a girl named Ariel. She was a mermaid and a half human. She has lived in the water ever since she was born with other mermaids. She has a fish scale body as she can swim and also walk like a human when she is out from the water. She wondered why she was so different from other mermaids. Then the queen mother began telling her the story of how she found her mother and became friends with her. Although her mother was a human who had no parents, she was an orphan. Her parents died when she was 10 years old and her grandmother took care of her till she turned 15 years old. She died. She had nobody in her life. She struggled on her own. She would go to the river every day to catch some fishes and sell in the market. That was her only means of survival. Anytime she goes to the river to check her net trap, there was a lot of fishes in the net. And she would be so happy, not knowing it was a mermaid who was putting so many fishes for her. The mermaids have seen how gentle and lovable she was and how she sang melodiously before leaving the river. The mermaid would watch her from behind. She liked her and wanted them to be friends. One day, she went to the river to check her net trap. She saw that the net was filled with fishes. As she lifted it, the mermaid was underneath the water, helping her to lift it as it was a lot of fishes. As the mermaid raised her face above the water, it came saw her and was afraid, and her hands were shaking as she collected the fishes from the mermaid. She couldn't utter a word as the mermaid was looking straight into her eyes and was smiling as she was scared. The mermaid with a gentle voice went close to her and told her not to be afraid that she meant no harm and that she has been watching her anytime she come fishing in the river and even the way she sang in the river was heartfelt with joy. Nkem was a little nervous and wondered why a mermaid would want to be friends with her instead of a normal human being 
Although Nkem never had any friend in the village since the death of her family, people around her neighborhood never liked her. They always point fingers at her that she was a bad child who killed her family, not knowing that her father fell from a palm tree when trying to tap some wine from the tree and died. The mother could not bear the pain and loss because that was when she gave birth to Nkem. Ten years later, she died of brain cancer. The grandmother then raised and came for five years before she died of high blood pressure. Ever since then, Nkem has been the one fending for herself. The mermaid then asked Nkem again, Do you want us to be friends? Nkem replied with a smile and said yes. The mermaid then gave Nkem a hug and told her she should be free with her and always come visiting the river anytime she wants. Nkem was happy because she now has a new friend she could confide in. Each day Nkem visit the river, she will sing for her friend to come out. They will play in the river and have fun. Nkem narrated everything she has been going through to the mermaid and how she lost her parents. One day, when Nkem was going home late in the evening, there was a man who watched her coming from afar in the bush path. He went towards her and raped her. She screamed, but nobody was there to help. The man held her mouth tightly and raped her, and even collected all the fishes in her hand and ran away. The poor 15 years in came cried as she walked slowly home. The next three days, she went to the river and discussed what has happened to her mermaid friend, not knowing she was already pregnant. As months passed by, she saw her belly getting bigger and was scared. Nine months later, she went to the riverside to see her mermaid friend as she was in labor. She sang until she fell. Immediately, she came out to rescue her as she told her to push. Immediately she pushed, the baby came out, and it was a girl. Nkem then told the mermaid to take care of her baby as her own, and named her Ariel. Nkem stood up with the little energy she has, and swore to the man that impregnated her, that he would see no peace all the days of his life. Three minutes later, she died. The mermaid then carried the child as her own and buried in came inside the river where all mermaids lived. Aria was surprised to hear the story of what her mother has passed through and she was so sad. Ten years later, Aria grew to a beautiful girl and every evening she would go out from the river and walk like a normal human being to look for the man that raped her mother in order to fight for revenge. But the Queen Mermaid would tell her not to look for him, that his father has already been cursed by her mother, that there is no meaning in his life because he's already living a life of misery. Anoche, who was the one that raped and came, has been living in misery ever since then. He married a wife but never had a child. He then married another wife, still did not have a child to the extent that he got married to three wives, but still no child. One year later, all of them got pregnant at once. Anoche was so happy that children would surround his table. He can't wait for them to be born as he start preparing for their birth. Nine months later, they gave birth and it was a monster. Immediately, the wives ran to their father's house, left the monster child behind for Anoche. Anoche couldn't withstand it. The rumor spread in the whole village as he was ashamed of himself. The villagers ordered the chief priest to come check out what was going on. On getting to Anoche's house, he sensed a bad sign as the gods revealed some things to him. He then told Anoche that he has done something wrong in the past, that he should confess. A real on the other hand, heard about the rumor and decided to see for herself, not knowing that she was going to see her father. On getting there, she saw Anoche 
and all the monster babies with the chief priest standing by the side. The chief priest then ordered him to confess. He then started confessing that he raped someone in the past and that he knew and heard about the story of Nkim because no one will come for him and because he has no family. But ever since then, he hasn't seen her again for years. On hearing what Anoche was saying, Ariel was surprised and was confused in astonishment. She didn't really know if the man was talking about her late mother. The chief priest then made some incantation and found out that Ariel was Anoche's daughter and then broke the news to them that Ariel's mother was the woman she raped 10 years ago. Immediately, Anoche started shaking and was pleading for mercy. Aria's heart was broken as she was in deep tears after hearing what has happened. But before she could look at Anoche, he has passed out. The chief priest then ordered the community to kill the monsters because they were a cursed children and that they would destroy their land. Immediately, people started stoning them to death. Aria, on the other hand, cried as she walked down to the river and never returned to the human world again. The moral of this story is that do not take advantage of people despite their situation or what they are going through. Please subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell below for more videos. Thanks for watching. See you on our next video. Bye bye. a time, in a small village of Ezago in Ochala Kingdom, there lived the four loving sisters. Three of them were married, but Udoka, the elder sister, still remained unmarried, despite all the efforts she put together by applying makeups on her face and also dressing well, even with her hard work. But still, no man in the community wants to look at her because to them she is very ugly. Udoka's parents will wonder why their eldest daughter haven't found love, yet alone married, just like their other children. Not knowing their spiritual husband always visit her at night to make love to her. Udoka, on the other hand, always sees it as a mere dream when she wakes up every morning. She thought it was just a dream, not knowing it was a physical act done by a spiritual husband. Twelve years ago, Udoka and her three sisters, Ijoma, Uchechi, and Chidalu, when they were still together in their parents' house, their mother would send them on an errand to fetch firewood. But Udoka, their elder sister, loved swimming a lot and she always liked going to the stream. After fetching the firewood, Udoka would tell her three siblings to swim with her in the river before going home with the firewood. They will all play in the river and have fun before going home with the firewood their mother sent them. Not knowing that there is a spirit man in the river who likes watching people whenever they come to swim. He loves seeing humans and wants to have children with them. Only when there is calmness in the river and the environs is quiet, no much people inside the river, that is when he can gain access to the human bodies. One day, Udoka told her sisters to accompany her to go and pluck some udara close to the riverside, but the sisters refused and told her it was getting dark and that even if they followed her, she would want to swim because she loved swimming a lot. One of the other sisters, Chidalu the last born, told her to pluck the ones around the compound instead of going to the riverside, but she said no. Their mother even told her that it's already 7 p.m. and it's getting dark. She won't see anybody around the riverside. She will be lonely there, which seems like a bad idea for her not to go. But instead, she insisted she wants to go in order to plug it, which is the sweetest one, and sell in the market. 
the next morning, other than the one in the compound that tastes bitter, of which the customer will not buy. She was doing that in order to support her family as the first daughter, since their mother didn't give birth to her son. Her parents and siblings pleaded with her not to go, that is getting dark. Before she gets there, it will be dark. She should leave it till tomorrow morning. But she said no, that if she did not go now, people will plug it before morning time. Immediately she left. On getting to the riverside, nobody was there. Instead of being afraid, she was courageous enough and was plugging the Udara from the tree. The spirit man from a distance was watching her and was happy he has found someone. Udoka, on the other hand, didn't notice the spirit man because she can't see spirits. She kept the Udara close to the tree after she has finished plugging it. Then she decided to swim a little before going home. Immediately she jumped inside the water to swim. The spirit man entered inside her body and possessed her and also made love to her inside the water. Udoka, on the other hand, didn't know what happened to her. Immediately she regained consciousness and found herself at the edge of the river. She packed her Udara and went home. Meanwhile, her mother was worried about her. Soon after, Udoka came home and the mother told her not to stay long outside the next time. This continued even after she stopped going to the riverside frequently. The spirit man would come at every night to sleep with her. She thought it was a dream, not knowing it was happening physically for 12 whole years, and has given birth to 12 children in spiritual realm from the spirit husband. Each time she is pregnant for the spirit husband, it will manifest that she looks pregnant physically. People started thinking she was pregnant. The mother would take her to the health center for tests but confirmed that she has fibroid. After 9 months, the stomach will lessen and become normal because she has given birth in the spiritual realm. This happened for 12 years and then her parents decided to seek for solution. They went to different places but to no avail. So they decided to see a man of God. Immediately the man of God saw her. He shouted blood of Jesus. He saw a spiritual mask covering her face that made all the men not to look at her or even marry her. Because the spirit husband has encoven her and for the past 12 years she has given birth to 12 children in the spiritual realm. This made her parents weep bitterly after hearing what the man of God said to them. The man of God then told her to go on the 40 days fasting and prayers and stay in the temple while fasting. Immediately she started the fasting. Every night, the spirit husband would look for her in order to sleep with her, but instead, her prayer was breaking every barrier of spell in her body. The spirit husband then came to the temple but cannot enter the temple because it was too holy. Immediately, he disappeared and never came back to her life again because the chain, the max, has been broken. She then regained herself after the 40 days fasting. Few days later, men from different communities were now asking for a hand in marriage. And then, finally, she got married and have her own children. Once upon a time, there lived the family who were going on a vacation alongside with their baby. Although they had misunderstanding and decided to reunite, the family was on a trip inside the ship with other people inside. Suddenly, it started raining heavily and then the boat began to shift from side to side as the waves was too much. People started panicking and was afraid. The baby started crying as the parents cuddled her. All of a sudden, the ship capsided as a heavy storm struck it. Everybody fell inside the ocean, including the baby. They all drowned to death, except the baby who was saved by a mermaid. However, the mermaid was behind as she watched the ship capsize as people got drowned. She saw the baby sinking inside the water 
Out of love and care, she saved the baby's life. Although she had no child of her own, but seeing a human baby inside the water gave her the courage to save her. She then wore the baby, a wrist bangle, to enable her breath inside the water and then took her home inside the deep ocean where all the mermaids dwell. Immediately all the mermaids saw the child. They were angry at the other mermaid who brought the baby to their kingdom and told her she should have allowed the baby drowned together with her parents or perhaps keep the baby at the edge of the water so its kinds can see and carry her. They were all disappointed at her and asked her to take the baby back to where it belongs. But instantly, she pleaded with them with tears in her eyes to keep the child to herself that she has been childless for years. The mermaids then sympathized with her and allowed the child to stay with her. The mermaid then named her princess. She then started teaching her on how to swim very well. Sometimes, her mother would give to her a fake fish scaled tail to wear and not to be different and also look like other mermaids. As years passed by, she grew to a beautiful young lady and was liked and cherished by every other mermaid. They loved and took her like their own. Each time she asked her mother why she is so different from everybody and that she has legs, why other including her mother a fish skilled body. But her mother won't give her enough reason. Instead, told her she was created so specially and so loved her including everyone because she is adorable. Her mother always warned her not to go to the shoreline that is dangerous. But each time she asked her mother, she won't reply her because she don't want to lose her in the hands of human since she can't give birth to her own child. She held and took care of princess on her own as her only child and don't want her to go to the human world. Princess spent almost all her life in the ocean. She will sing and play with all the living things, including the fishes inside the ocean. One day, she swam outside the deep ocean and saw a wrecked ship inside the water. She has never seen such thing before and then entered inside and saw a statue, hair, comb, spoons, and bottles. She imagined what they are used for and then packed them home to show her mother what she has found in the water. The mother, with a loud voice, shouted and warned her not to go outside the deep ocean again. The next day, without her mother noticing, she went to the wrecked ship again to carry more things. On her way going, she saw another ship floating on the water and was amazed to see such thing. She then swam to the top of the water and saw people who looked like her in a private resort where people come to chill and also saw the way the ship was moving on the water. She was so surprised and wondered why she lived in the ocean all through her life as a mermaid. She saw how everywhere outside her world was beautiful. She then swam outside, removed her fish scale tail and then tried to walk on the land like every other people. She tried to walk with her two legs, but it was too difficult for her to stand. Everybody in the beach started looking at her as she created attention. She then tried to walk again, but instead she fell on the ground because she was used to the water. A young guy whose father was the owner of the resort saw her and then carried her to the bar. The man then looked at her and saw how weird she was and then showed her how to drink and also asked for her name and where she lived. She then told him everything and how she has lived all her life inside the water. The young man was in shock of what she said as everything seemed strange to him. It was getting dark and then she told him to take her to the water. Her mother would be looking for her by now. The young man named Raph 
then carried her to the river and told her to always visit him anytime. She then waved goodbye to him and swam back to the ocean. Her mother was worried and was looking for her everywhere inside the water, saw her and asked where she was coming from. She then told her mother everything and how she met Raph. Her mother was sad and then started crying that her daughter would leave her to the human world. She then gave her another serious warning, never to leave the water to the human world again. As time passed by, Princess started having feelings for Raph. So as Raph, he would go near to the shoreline to look for Princess and to see if Princess would come back again. Their love grew more stronger. Princess couldn't hold it again and then swam outside the surface of the water. Immediately Ralph saw her, he was happy and then hugged and kissed her. They played, had fun. The mother now noticed how often she leaves the ocean and then decided to follow her. She then saw the both of them, how deep they loved each other. One day, she called Princess and narrated her story of how her parents drowned and how she saved her when she was just a baby and never wanted to leave her because she had no child of her own. Princess with deep tears in her eyes then promised her mother she will always come visiting and that the water is not her world. She has seen where she belongs. One year later, she got married to Raph and sometimes visit the ocean with Raph to see her mother. They all welcomed him and they both lived happily. Please like and comment, subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell below for more videos. Thank you for watching. See you on our next video. Bye-bye.